Welcome back to Case Closed, Anime Review, episode number 142. And one thing I just noticed, though, basically, like, this one along with, like, uh, Black Clover are basically not that far apart from each other. Yeah. So this one I'm discussing the 1030th episode of the anime, which is known as The Blank Year, part 1, and chapter 1083. Now... Like usual, because this is not based on the manga, this is a complete anime original episode. It starts off with Mori, where he had just finished up a case, a figure though, go do some drinking. But then he basically helps get a guy out of the road who gets nearly run over by a car. Yes, he gets nearly run by a car. And it turns out this guy, apparently, he is suffering from partial memory loss, where apparently... He can't remember anything he did for the prior year. And, of course, he does recognize Mori right away because of his celebrity says, like, he's like, oh, aren't you Mori Kogoro, the famous detective? He's like, yes. Can you help me? They're like, okay. So he goes back to Mori's office, and Conan's there. Yes, just by pure coincidence, Conan, well, probably because they're... Yeah, it's been unusual to start with Mori because a lot of the time, Mori is not the one, a lot of the time, for these ending original episodes... Of the regular characters who they usually start off with, so so basically he discusses that apparently he uh, apparently can't remember anything in the previous year. He suffered from previous, another form of amnesia, or he can remember anything of his past. So he woke up in a station. He goes back to his work. Maybe they might remember him. And it turns out no one has seen him for the past year, and he got fired. He tried to go back to his apartment, but someone else was living there. So. Of course, later on, they do show him in another apartment. So, they try to help him, basically, try to regain his memory. So, they just walk about. They get nothing. He tries yelling at him. That doesn't work. And then, of course, they come across a couple of different police officers. First one, apparently couldn't talk because he was in a hurry. And turns out this guy was actually not a police officer, but a burglar. Who disguised himself as a police officer in order to commit burglaries. Which, okay, and of course they follow up like, okay, so that's the reason why. And they talk to the guy at the police station, and it turns out he does remember him. He was off to live with some elderly couple for a year <clears throat> while he took care of him. Got these over some amnesia. And they go to the place, and they, they ring the doorbell, and the wife just happens to be there, and wondering like, okay, and all of a sudden, just by sheer coincidence, her husband comes home. Yes, her husband. And they recognize him as Tao. That's why I think his name is Is Isika. I think he pronounced his name. So they do remember exactly what he was up to the previous year. And of course, you have three people who actually do confirm. One, one guy named Hida. He apparently worked. Apparently, the past year he worked for his construction company. The woman, who it's possible these two were in fact in a relationship. It doesn't really go anywhere. Yeah, I thought this was kind of odd, to say the least. Mm -hmm. Her name is uh, Taco. Yes, is also a cram student, who apparently he knew. Yeah. Then, of course, like... Apparently, like, so happy to be reunited with him. So, they go out, get some eating done. And apparently, Toto, apparently he, she had cooked for him and he really loved her cooking. And it's possibly these two, like I said, were possibly a couple, but who knows. So, they go eating, of course, they walk along, and then, of course, he gets swooped by a dog. Apparently, he does remember the dog's name. His name is Shikamaru. Uh, Shishishimaru. Yeah, he remembers the dog's name, which is interesting. Yes, but I don't think he remembers the dog's name. He does, he, he does remember when he was a kid. He got bitten by bitten the butt by a dog. So he doesn't like dogs very much. So they go eat, and of course, Maury, like usual, when they go out, we have some beer. He, of course, gets drunk, though he easily gets so at being like embarrassed. Don't think about possibly killing dogs with lightning. And of course, the guy, what's his name here? Tensico, his wife's name is T. So, 
he he goes home take care of his wife probably goes to take a medicine and then of course looks like seem like we're starting to remember exactly like his memory and then of course Isaka basically goes back to his apartment. By the way, a couple times on the news, they, they've seen these people get murdered. And apparently people are con artists. Like, what the heck? Like, people got killed in the mountains. The police are having difficulty finding the culprit. Then, of course, then he sees somebody, there's somebody at his door. But apparently he may have seen something in the past. <clears throat> Maybe the reason why he got rid of the image in the first place. And then Mori and Conan decide to go visit. And then all of a sudden... There's a police car in front of the place. Like, what the heck is going on here? And it turns out, McGuire and Tagagi are there. Why? Because the man they were searching for, the man they did visit, apparently he committed suicide. Poisoned. And, of course, Mori and Kony realize, though, that makes no sense. And it makes about a suicide note, and like, okay. So, we're going to do something further into the next episode, which this should be interesting. I gotta say, this is a good episode. Hopefully it's like some other hopefully it's not like some other two parters where it has a good start, very weak ending. That's the way it is a lot of the time with some of these two parters for AM original content. Alright, moving on to 1033, the borderline memory. And yes, I am sorry the fact I actually kind of bumbled my way through this the review last chapter, so just move on here. So it turns out yeah, yes, I actually knew um, Hemosu's brother. Yes, he knew his brother when he was a kid, and he says basically he's able to thought he looked familiar because, uh, like, how he looked familiar? They got identical eyes. Okay, yes, I can buy that in fiction where siblings do have the same eyes. Sometimes it's also like that for parents. That's all he instantly recognized them. So the guy's going to detail basically how he knew when he was a kid and apparently disappeared. At some point he was also, he mentioned he's also a big fan of Ken and Yabba who was actually in the first generation. So he's like, oh that's a so that's why I'm a detective. Yes, because I'm, attra I'm attracted to female detectives from TV shows, but yes, also because of that. <laughs> yeah. Despite the fact that the guy hasn't got a love interest yet. <laughs> and of course, I remember it's like, Kumi, wasn't your younger brother a police also a police officer? Yes. Oh no way, you have any contact information? I haven't touched him. And of course they have the bullet thing that they got from the police story case, which that should be interesting. And then of course they show up a picture of their hideout that they actually had when they were kids. Him and well, Kumi's older brother. And he's like, you really live in that Reddit place? Rude, it's an outside building with a yard. It's a preferred to board. Look, look, look at the rocks in front of each other between the place. Yes. We compare the rocks to map of the border together and found that sign. And they, the sign itself, that's going to play later on the episode, later on the chapter. So then they start investigating, like, the, the murder for a bit. So Coda and all three to basically figure out, though, that... Oh yeah, the fact that the three might be the one behind it. So, go to the security footage. Like, oh, there he is. And of course, it, and of course, Rand figures out, he must be thinking, where, what are they doing? Because they haven't come out yet. So, they go visit one of the people. Who, of course, Conan just runs their apartment. And, apparently, like, that's a good spot. And of course, Rand picks him up. It's a good thing Mori's not here. If Mori was here, he'd probably see, he'd probably smack him on the head with his fist, like he normally does. But thank God he's not here. Thinking they're sure, okay. whether or not the, the woman shown the security is her or not, huh? You said the woman was shown. Yeah, just a little bit ago, I stealthily recorded footage on my phone. When the culprit escapes, the curtain opens up this room. Someone looks out. There is. So, this becomes an alibi. It does, doesn't it? And there's Mori. Yes. You're very kind, sweetie, for doing this. Well, the whole point of being down here 
Yep, and then he drops his phone. Sorry. Oh, I know you see soon. About that photo. Yeah, apparently it looked like they're friends of theirs. And think of it as another creator. All about live streamers. And, you see, and of course you have the female detective. I don't remember her name. It's like, oh, it changes the lights up. Divine. Yeah, you're more beautiful than ever. <laughs> yeah. And this other detective who's got dark skin, she's in love with them. They're childhood friends. And she's in love with them. Of course, he does know it. He doesn't really express it very much if he's attracted to her or not. But he does know that he is. she's in love with him. Yeah, she, he knows all about it. So he doesn't have a problem with it at all. There's another streaming uh, another content creator. Chat for him for a bit. And then they go to and then they go to a French they go so they go to, all they go to a restaurant. Or talk about various stuff like like apparently the first person they visit had a sewing set, a box cutter. It's like it was a woman and the third guy basically had like a blackjack. I bet you ran the board or what? It goes well, I'm so full, Lee Suba. <laughs> That's it, his position. The corpse. His necktie and belt were loosened. He positioned like he was fell from overheating. And Cohen's like, I remember correctly his body had uh, had his body open legs like a crab. Front claws, his mouth was wide open. Was he wearing his boots or something? He had some black boots on. Okay, then. What's your try to friend Hirochan? When you said the hideout was mysterious in your hideout, maybe the hideout's entrance sign what was in the correct place. What was in the place correctly was in place. Oh, yeah, the nail on the left side of, of the sign broke off. And it dangled down. It dangled down with the something's on the top and the other character maybe like Koi I see that's exactly you're most knowledgeable when, when you hear many words you listen to biased words this is active Kumi he loves quoting stuff without the summation I really missed that message many words what do you say alright rather than Luke come up with something in advance his advisor, Mei Ling, advised him to listen to Kong, based almost like Shen Zhu, which means he can make a right decision, can't make a right decision based on biased information. Fortunately, Ren Zhang is only to make it clear. It seems like the soak up victim, it seems like the victim called the copyright name. I use it, these like, his obscure corpse. Like, okay, interesting. So, yeah, I like this chapter. It's really good. It's a good advancement on Yatuma, yeah, where apparently he has a past with Kumi's younger brother, which is so interesting. We're definitely looking forward to the next chapter that comes out next week. But unlike last chapter, I didn't bungle this one up like the last one, but this definitely was a good chapter. And it's nice that Kona was able to clear the, the first person they counted just by the fact that, well... She was in her apartment, and the video footage actually confirmed it. Though they might basically poke a hole in that. Probably next chapter. Now, I'm kind of hoping this, this arc is not three chapters. I'm hoping it's four, because the last several arcs have been only three chapters, and that's it. Could this mean possibly this arc is finished up, that we might see another uh, adaptation? It's possible. And you might think, okay, so... Last one they did was, I believe it was the Foss, Antique Fawcett one? That was the last one they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the um, last no case they adapted was Antique Fawcett case. So, the very next case to actually know was a Lover Code case. Yes, that was the last one they did. So next one is going to be a quite interesting one. And this one, I'm looking forward to this one. It is the Shogi Player Murder Case. It's possible this will be the next one that might adapt as soon as this two-parter wraps up. 
I mean, they tend to have, like, a very short period of time between, like, canon episodes nowadays, so... Maybe you might say that. It's possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in case you're curious, though, the next case is a 300 case overall for the series. So, since this is a four-parter, maybe we might... I'm hoping this is not going to be stretched out for a two-parter, per se. It better be stretched out a little bit more than, like, two episodes. I, I would like to see, like, at least three or four at most. Yep. So, yeah, that's it for Circular View. Stay tuned for my next review, which is going to be... Barto. Okay, next video. Bye.